I'm calling back to order this meeting of the Sacramento City Unified School District Board of Education. Student Member Nguyen, if you will please read the broadcast statement. This meeting of the Sacramento City School Board is being recorded in its entirety and will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T UVerse. Today's meeting will air Saturday, February 3rd at 12 p.m. and Sunday, February 4th at 9 a.m. and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. We welcome members of the audience to address the board. Please complete a speaker form located in the back of the community room and give them to our communications representative along with any handouts that you may have for the board prior to the conclusion of the item's presentation. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Please limit comments during public comment to items that are not on the agenda. If you do comment on an item that is on the agenda, we ask that you please defer your comments until your item comes up on the agenda. Please also turn off your cell phones and place them on silent or vibrate. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Olivia Howard, an eighth grade student at Albert Einstein Middle School. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Come back. Olivia, if you'll please come back. We have a couple words for you. Thank you, President microphone on can you hear me all right all right thank you president ryan olivia howard is a stellar student at albert einstein middle school whether she is playing trombone with our advanced band or helping to lead her team on the basketball court olivia is always doing her best maybe it is that she's trying to be an example for her three younger siblings maybe it is that she is humble and gives credit to her parents for teaching her to be responsible Whatever her motivation, Olivia manages her time so well that she maintains a 4.0 grade point average while being a basketball star and an extraordinary musician. Olivia's responsibility and, good, and goodwill flows from her home. Olivia takes being the oldest sibling seriously. She can often be found at home letting her five-year-old sister read to her. At school, she's on the basketball court with her other sister, where they're the dynamic duo. <laughs> Olivia has this to say, I'm working, good, I'm working for a good future. The more I do, the closer I get to that. Her message is one that all of us can learn from and the one that Olivia lives. I'd like to just congratulate Olivia, and I understand that there's another congratulations in order. I saw online today that the Einstein Eagles basketball team won a playoff game. Is that correct? Yay. <laughs> Great job. Would you like to say a few words? No, you don't no. want to thank anybody? <laughs> well, if you could stay right there, I'm going to come down. Are you sure you don't want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> Is Daryl making faces back there? <laughs> Here you go. Congratulations. You. <laughs> Wonderful. So we're going to take an announcement of action taken in closed session. Uh, none, Madam President. Thank you. Item 6.0, agenda adoption. Item 7.0, special presentation, first 7.1, approving Re resolution 2981, recognition of National Black History Month, which will be presented by board member Mai Vang. 
Good evening. So tonight I have the honor of presenting the resolution for Black History Month. Month. Can I, um, at this moment, ask our black educators in the room to come up to the podium um, and also our HR department? So I'm extremely honored to present the resolution tonight. As you know, uh, February is Black History Month. However, um, February uh, should not be the only time where we celebrate and reflect on the, importance, uh, contra the important contributions of the black community. Uh, in addition to those contributions, both recognize and not, it's absolutely critical that we also look at our history and our current environment critically in order to point out the injustice that many black families continue to face today. This month and every month, we have to continue building a more equitable society free from hate and discrimination towards our black students and families. Our district and our board remains dedicated to the realization of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream and the dream of so many others, those who fought during the civil rights movement and continue to fight for justice. I am very happy to point out that many within the community and the district are working hard every day to realize this dream. Today, I had the opportunity to visit our district's Men Leadership Academy program at Woodbine, and it was truly inspiring to see the great work that's happening for our young men of color. Um, I look forward to visiting our women's uh, leadership uh, in the near future. Um, as many of you also heard, or you may have known, our, L our Men's Leadership Academy was recently highlighted um, in a national uh, report on black male achievement initiatives. And I want to take this time to congratulate all the students who are part of that program. And I, I, I really want to take this time to give a shout out to Stacy, if she can also come up, because she's always so humble and in the back. Um, I really just want to give a shout out to Stacy. Dr. Stacey Holt <laughs> and her entire staff at the Youth Development Department um, for really making, a rea uh, making uh, this a reality for our young people. Um, I also want to take the time to thank our HR department um, for really focusing on recruiting talented black educators. Um, our district has really begun to um, have a concerted effort to attract teachers that reflect our student population. Um, I want to thank our newly hired teachers from historically black colleges and university for choosing Sac City Unified School District. Uh, I want to say we really appreciate your dedication to our students and families um, and all of those who got you here and also recruited you and asked you to come serve here. Um, I know for, for me and for many students of color in, in Sac City Unified School District, it's really important um, to be in a classroom, classroom where we see an educator that looks like us, that understands our our day-to-day -day struggle and our lived experiences. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have more faculty of color, more teachers of color, more staff of color that understand the struggles that our students face. Um, so with that said, I am going to present this resolution, but because of the short time, I'm not going to read it. But I do ask our HR department to put this up in the office um, and really just to, um, I just want to say thank you for the great work that you've done in the district. Um, at this time, I actually want to take this opportunity to ask the HR team or Stacy or any of the staff um, if they would like to just um, share some thoughts, um, and I would encourage you to, to say a few words. Hi, my name is Amy Pearson. Um, I actually attended Texas Southern University, and I would just like to say thank you so much um, for the team for giving us an opportunity to come here and do what we love to do, so thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to entertain a motion to approve this resolution. resolution. I will second. All those in favor? Uh, may Aye. we have a preferential vote? Oh, that's right. Student oh, yes. And to our student member, your preferential vote. Aye. <laughs> Wonderful. The motion so, unanimously passes. I'm going to go down there really quick and hand this over. Like we're photobombing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We are so grateful for your efforts day in, day out.
I am moving on to item 7.2, approving resolution 2982, recognition of National No One Eats Alone Day. I will be presenting that. I have to say that I was proud to bring this initiative to the district three years ago. I wish that our bullying prevention specialist, Jessica Wharton, could be here tonight because we did this in recognition that many children in our school district do not feel welcome, often are struggling with isolation and struggling with bullying, both at the elementary school level, the middle school level, and in high school. When this campaign first began at a national level, it was the result of a family whose daughter had passed who had been a victim of bullying and social isolation. This is a day when we come together to spread a campaign based on love and inclusiveness to encourage our students at schools across the district to eat with someone new, to invite someone that they might not have thought of asking to share their life story otherwise, to share a meal with them, and to become potentially a friend and ally. This is so important as we help to ensure that each and every one of our students feels like they have a welcoming school environment and also to recognize that in order to learn, we have to ensure that our students don't feel marginalized, that they don't feel isolated, that they feel connected to their school community. So again, this year, we will be having our No One Eats Alone Day. We're proclaiming February 9th of 2018 National No One Eats Alone Day. I invite you to join us at one of our participating middle schools. And at this time, I would like to invite the representatives from Fern Bacon to come up to receive the award. We are so fortunate to have with us tonight Mary Coronado, our Fern Bacon principal, one of the many principals and teachers across the district who have embraced this initiative. Mary, before we move to, re to approve the resolution, if you would say a, a few words. I have my media, my own media here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on our uh, weekly student bulldog bulletin, and I just want to say good evening, Board President Ryan, members of the board, and Superintendent Aguilar. And thank you for this recognition. And at Fern Bacon, our greatest resource is our staff, and our, in particular, our classroom teachers, who do the work of heroes every day with our students. Ms. Sherry Donovan is our leadership teacher, who empowers our leadership students to make a difference on this national No One Eats Alone Day and every day at Fern Bacon Middle School. Um, so we just thank you for bringing this initiative. This is our, it'll be our fourth year participating yes. um, in doing this. And when it was first brought to me by Jessica, I said, why would we not? <laughs> it embodies everything that we believe and stand for at Fern Bacon Middle School. And that is that no one eats alone. Yes. Everyone is a friend. Yeah. No one is an island. We are together in this. So that's thank you. beautiful. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And I know that we had her in the audience a minute ago, but Gail Johnson from Father Keith B. Kenny was actually the first principal in the district to embrace and launch the No One Eats Alone campaign at her school site. And it was a beautiful thing to see in action. So I'm looking forward to participating again this year. Can I have a motion to approve the resolution? Move to All those in favor? Aye. OK, then we're going to come take a picture. Oh, and, our, <laughs> and I will get used to this. And our student preferential vote. Thank you. <laughs> you can take a picture of the camera, man. <laughs> Turn it back on. Your 
And I will share, we have new California law that allows and encourages the preferential vote of our student board member. So you will hear me throughout the night, um, and I, I'm so grateful to my colleagues for reminding me, asking for the student board member's preferential vote as her vote and her voice is critical to our decision-making process. Item 7.3, approve resolution 2983, recognition of teen dating, violence, awareness, and prevention month, which will be presented by board member Michael Minnick. Thank you, President Ryan. Is this on? Uh, I guess so. Um, there I am. Uh, can I ask our uh, partners from my sister's house and Weave and the California Partnership to End Domestic Violence to come forward, please? <laughs> awesome. Um, so it's my um, honor tonight to present this resolution in recognition of Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. Um, I'm not going to read the whole resolution. It's a lot of whereases and therefores. Um, but I will um, point out a few uh, important points. Uh, the Center for Disease Control report, uh, reports that one in four adolescents report verbal emotional, physical, or sexual abuse from a partner. Oftentimes it's because they've, these young people have grown up in violent homes and believe that the, this is what love looks like. Fortunately, we have some awesome organizations like the three that are represented here and many others who are working with young people to help them understand that love shouldn't hurt. So tonight, I want to thank Weave. I want to thank my sister's house. And I want to thank the California Partnership to End Domestic Violence for all the work they're doing to ensure that the young people in our community are uh, able to live healthy and positive uh, lives with their partners. So from the resolution, I will read the last uh, paragraph. The Sacramento City Unified School Board, of, School Board of Education proclaims the month of February 2018 as Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month and supports communities to empower teens to develop healthy and violence-free relationships throughout their lives. So if any of your organizations would like to uh, say a few words, and I will um, come to, oh, we have to do a vote first, sorry. Uh, I will motion to approve resolution Second. 2983. Second. And our student preferential vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So if you'd like to speak, and I will come down with these. Hi, I'm Beth Hassett, the CEO of Weave, and um, we're very proud of the multiple partnerships we have with the school district to provide education and intervention for students who are at risk or um, have actually experienced teen dating violence. And it's our 40th anniversary this year, and our goal is to not be here in 40 years, and it's through these prevention programs and getting to kids when they're young um, that we even stand a chance of that. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alexa Alejandris. I'm from my sister's house. And on behalf of our board, our staff, our clients, and our youth leadership program, we thank you for your commitment to this issue. Thank you so much. Hey. <laughs> Uh, so thank you. I'm with the California Partnership to End Domestic Violence, and we work statewide on this issue. And I just want to say what a joy it is to be able to partner with the school district and the school board on ensuring that our young people grow up to have healthy relationships and healthy lives free from this kind of violence. Thank you all for your work. Thank you. Thank you so much for your dif difficult work. Um, item 8.0, public comment. Do we have any public comment? <laughs> the six public comments. Um, if you could come up in order when you hear your name, stand in line. Uh, Puni Holst, Bob Hamas, Molly Close, Lisa Curry, Joseph Powell, and Olivia Inigas.
when do I, oh, Superintendent Aguilar and board members. I spoke to you about five months ago about my experience and concerns with the McClatchy School Site Council. I'm here to update you that there haven't been any improvements. My primary concerns remain the same. First, there has been no review or evaluation of the past 2017-18 SIPSA, and no relevant student level data was used to evaluate the previous or current SIPSA. For the proposed 2018-19 SIPSA, it was created without any relevant or meaningful data also that was ever shared or discussed with the council members and at the meetings. Two, requests for student level data still go unanswered. Three, communication amongst the council members and the school at large remains quite poor and inadequate. I'd also like you to know that teachers and a staff member have spoken with me in private and told me that they agreed with me but will not back me up because they are afraid of retaliation at the school. I am disappointed that I am unable to make any progress at the school for better student outcomes. I hope the district will be able to help come up with a way for council members, school site council members, to have better access to data to help them create a meaningful SIPSA and have meaningful discussions. And that a SIPSA will be created that supports student academic achievement, college and career readiness, and help support a positive school climate. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Superintendent and uh, President Ryan and board members. My name is Bob Hamas. I'm with Making Sense Work and the Community Coalition. Uh, I'm also here to comment on the McClatchy Site Council. Um, in various <clears throat> ways of teachers and parents, we've worked off and on with the McClatchy, not directly with the Site Council, but with members of the Site Council for five or six years. And this is a situation that has um, existed for at least that long um, that Pooney is describing to you. And um, in some ways, um, it seems that <clears throat> the fact that they've held elections, they're holding meetings, and they produce a signed SIPSA seems to be all the district is uh, requiring them to do or, or that they're, they're satisfied with those outcomes, when actually it really is a non-functioning site council. The three main tasks that a site council should do are evaluating the prior year's site plan, monitoring and evaluating the current year's site plan, and developing the next year's plan. And all of this requires uh, data that is relevant to the plan that they are looking at. Um, so um, the uh, administration at the school will tell you that much data was presented at the meetings, but it was never presented in the context of evaluating or monitoring the site plan. So uh, no relevant information was really produced by the council in order to develop a, a new plan. Uh, I know there's been discussion on um, aligning the SIPSAs with the LCAP and the budget, but if you, if you want SIPSAs that really identify the needs at the schools, then you need to provide the proper training and direction to site councils, or you're not really getting a document that reflects the realities of, of, of those schools. And it's, Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, this is a little bit spontaneous for me. I um, just found out about this today. My name is Molly Close. I'm a parent of two students in the Sac City Unified School District. One of my daughters attends Alice Burney and the other attends Capital City School. Um, the reason that she has found herself at Capital City School is because she was an energetic and very academically gifted student at Alice Burney who decided to take advantage of the many wonderful programs that were at McClatchy High School, including the Visual and Performing Arts Program and the HISP program. When she was there, um, a history of um, anxiety and depression took hold and she was plummeted into a situation where she could not continue at that school. Um, she was placed on medical independent study and we discovered Capital City School, a school we had never ever heard of before. 
Um, it has fundamentally changed her life and the way she sees school and the way she sees academics. She has a hope for her future. Um, she's thinking about college again. She's excited. She wants to be a doctor. And I have seen her flourish. Every Thursday after she meets with her teachers, she gets in the car and the first thing she does is look over at me and say, I love school. Yeah. And I heard today that there are plans in place to cut funding to Capital City School. Um, I have heard nothing but good stories about children who have gone there, who have been able to graduate, who otherwise wouldn't have been able to graduate from populations of students that otherwise would not have had a chance in the school district. And it gravely concerns me that you are planning on making cuts to this school. Um, I've heard that there are going to be teacher reductions, which is going to impact the ability of teachers to provide the one-on-one -on -one attention to the students that they need. And I know that it's not on the agenda tonight, but I'm asking it to be put on the agenda for a future meeting. Thank you very much. If we can please uh, reset the clock, I think. Okay, great. Thank okay, I'll try to be really fast. My name is Lisa Curry. I've been a high school English teacher in the district for 20 years. I'm currently at Capital City. Um, like the parent before me said, we're, we're working with Ms. Vang, our board member, to get placed on the agenda, but we felt it was pressing enough to come down tonight and just start putting ourselves on your radar. We feel like we're in crisis. We have had positions cut. We're a small school to begin with. And we're being told that students and families are going to the placement office and being denied a referral to our school and being sent back to their home school and placed in um, um, online credit recovery classes. So I wanted to share with you that I have been the teacher supervisor in online credit recovery classes at Burbank. And what typically happens is that students who are performing well be below their grade level are placed at a computer and given a class that's at the high end of their grade level. They can't understand it. They give up. Basically, they're told swink, sink or swim. And not surprisingly, many of them sink. At Capital City, we are able to work with them one-on-one -on -one and give them the um, scaffolding, decoding strategies. We're able to gear lessons to their particular ability levels, interests, learning styles. And um, I've worked in both situations. And this one's just much better. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your comments tonight. Oh, and also I brought you our brochure. <clears throat> Our board secretary will make sure that gets handed out to each of us. Thank you again. I appreciate you and the other Cap City uh, families and teachers who have come out. Hello, my name is Olivia Iniguez, and I'm here on behalf of Capital City. Um, sorry, this gets me really emotional. But um, please, uh, the teachers there, it's not only about your education, but it's also about your mental health and the fact that the teachers sit down with you and give you as much time that you need to sit there and try to understand what's wrong and what's frustrating you with class is what helps a lot. And in public school, you can get that. There's other students that also need help and the individual time and attention that you receive from a teacher is honestly a blessing. And when I heard that there's gonna be a reduction of teachers, that's a reduction of courses. And for less high school teachers, that means that I'm gonna have to go to a public school and basically be trapped where I was before. Um, I don't really know what to say, <coughs> but I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you for voicing your concerns tonight. We'll be looking into this. Thank you. We have one last public comment. Come on up. Good evening, Board President Ryan and Superintendent Aguilar. My name is LaShanya Brazil, and I'm with the Black Parallel School Board, and I'm just here to give you an update of what's going on with the Black Parallel School Board. First of all, I want to announce the 10th anniversary of the launching of the Black Parallel School Board. It will be on Saturday, November the 3rd, 2018, at 12 o'clock noon. We will host a celebration of our 10 years of paralleling with the Sacramento School, School District 
and we would like all board members, if possible, to attend. And we'll get those invitations out to you. And then second, on Tuesday, February 20th, the Black Parallel School Board is participating in the National African American Parent Involvement Date. Uh, this, the Black Parallel Involvement Day is an opportunity for parents to visit their child's school throughout the day. And I will just conclude that under the board of our new superintendent leadership, we are ready to move our district in the 21st century multicultural learning um, system. Thank you again, Ms. LaShonda Brazil with the Black Parallel School Board. Thank you, Ms. LaShonda. We have no other public comments at this time. Item 9.1 public hearing on the renewal of the charter petition and petition for admission preferences for Aspire Capital Heights Academy. Good evening, uh, Board President Ryan. Esteemed board members and Superintendent Aguilar, I'm Jack Kramer, Director of Innovative Schools and Charter Oversight. I will be facilitating the public hearing on charter renewal and petition admission preferences for Aspire Capital Heights Academy. Uh, with me, I have some uh, guests from uh, Aspire. Uh, to my left, we have uh, Dr. Steph Sanders. He is principal of Capital Heights Academy. And to his left, uh, we have Mr. Lane Weiss, and he is area superintendent. And uh, to my right, Tony Salina, and he is associate superintendent. The content format and governance information from this presentation will serve agenda items, uh, this agenda item 9.1, as well as agenda item 9.2. Uh, with that, the content format for public hearing for tonight will be um, the first four we've seen many times as we've had uh, lots of uh, public hearings this school year. And number five is uh, specifically for Aspire Capital Heights Academy, and they will make a, a presentation immediately after mine. Uh, Aspire Capital Heights Academy, they have been in operations as a uh, charter school authorized by Sac City Unified for 15 years. They opened July 21st, 2003. Last year's enrollment was 292, and they serve students kindergarten through fifth. They are located at 2520 33rd Street, and they are on non-district owned property. They are an independent charter school with their renewal petition submitted on January 19th. Board action is currently slated for March 15th. Their current charter expires June 30th. This is uh, the renewal process and uh, it basically uh, begins with the submission of the charter petition. Uh, that is the start. Uh, we are in the go phase, which is a public hearing, which we are holding tonight. And uh, public hearing must be held within 30 days of the petition submission. Uh, we conclude the process with a board decision uh, within 30 days of petition submission, unless there is a mutually agreed upon uh, extension of 30 days. The purpose of public hearing as it relates to Ed Code 47605B and Ed Code 47607A2 is to allow, uh, the public hearing allows the governing board to consider the level of support for the petition. It allows petitioners and the public to speak regarding the renewal charter application. And finally, it allows interested parties to comment to the governing board regarding their support or opposition to the renewal. We are also holding a public hearing, and this time uh, as it relates to uh, AB 1360, AB 1360 is a new legislation that uh, takes effect uh, January 1st of uh, this school year. And in essence, uh, AB 1360 requires public hearing to allow the governing board to consider and approve the petition admission preferences uh, for the petitioner, in this case, Capitol Heights Academy. Uh, in um, Capitol Heights Academy's charter petition, uh, they have these five admission preferences listed. 
And uh, they are uh, children of uh, Aspire uh, employees. Number two, siblings of students already at the school. Three, students from other Aspire schools. Number four, children residing within the district. And finally, students uh, residing in California. Our next steps, uh, the governing board uh, approves the petition admission preferences, and it is on consent agenda tonight. Um, with that, the district staff, we will continue our review of petitioners' uh, previous practices and data, as well as their proposed practices and data, alongside with the renewal charter petition itself. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, the school district has 60 days in which to grant or deny the charter, and uh, unless there is a mutually agreed upon extension. And uh, for Aspire Capital Heights, we do not have a mutually agreed upon 30-day extension. Board action is currently slated for March 15th. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, bring up Aspire for uh, their presentation. Superintendent Aguilar, Board President Ryan, distinguished members of the board, distinguished members in the community. I'm the proud principal of Aspire Capital Heights, Dr. Steph Sanders. And I'd like at this time for all community members of Capital Heights Academy, students, staff, and families to stand, please. Thank you very much. As stated, I am the proud principal of Capital Heights Academy. We opened in 2003, we opened for 2004. National Title I Blue Ribbon School 2010, Distinguished School Award winner 2013. We have, amongst our other content areas, we have choir, music, dance, and technology. Our vision is that we, we, we prepare future college graduates through the purposeful and patient education of the whole child, mind, body, and heart. We develop scholars who are brilliant, confident, and compassionate lifelong learners. Along with that, our mission is to model and maintain high expectations of our scholars and assess and address the needs and challenges of each of our scholars and their families. Our student diversity should be student affinity groups. We have groups such as our Child Pearls, which is a girls empowerment group, our Peer Ambassadors Student Leadership Group, and we have plenty of mindfulness and SEL programs as we, as we educate the entire child. <coughs> Focus on 21st century skills. We have Common Core Math, Eureka Math, Common Core Wonders, ELA, Second Step SEL program, and our norms are designed around the four agreements. Our student supports in place. Beyond the bell, we have a SOAR after school program, teacher homework clubs and office hours, a parent literacy program in which we have students from Sac State come in and teach our parents how we teach reading and comprehension. And our SPED department has two full-time ed specialists, development of collaborative teaching strategies, co-teaching, and co-planning. A developing of effective educators at CHA, Two deans, that we have a dean of instruction and a dean of students who are both here tonight. Lead teachers facilitate weekly department leadership and stack analysis, or commonly known as cycle of inquiry, COIs. Our weekly grade level meetings and weekly PDs, and all of our, our teachers at CHA are GLAD trained. Strong student culture was a major emphasis uh, once I took over the principal role three years ago. ago. Plenty of town halls, CHA norms were rewritten. Second step curriculum for SEL, ruler training uh, for SEL, the four agreements, restorative practices. We need to have yoga for mindfulness and a peer ambassadors group again. Our suspensions have been reduced from 11% to 6% over the last two years. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Um, just wanted to go back a little bit, too, and just represent some of the demographics at the school. So at Capital Eyes Academy, we're located in the Oak Park region. And if you'll notice, the student demographics really closely mirror uh, the neighborhood. And that is our first goal, is to recruit and um, have students from that neighborhood attend our schools. Um, also, you'll notice the data. We um, compared our school to comparable schools in the neighborhood. So you can see the difference between the schools in our area, we specifically um, focus on African-American, Latino, and free and reduced lunch students, as those are our primary populations. 
Um, and then overall, you can see the Aspire vision and mission is closely aligned to the mission and vision for Capitol Heights Academy. Um, definitely college for certain is the number one. That's what we're known for. 100% of our graduates um, were accepted to four-year universities from our secondary schools. So from kindergarten, all of our classrooms are named after colleges, and the students are wear, allowed to wear um, on Fridays um, college gear to kind of promote that college-going culture. Um, and then lastly, you can see some of the key initiatives that we're focused on as an organization. It's really around recruiting top talent, growing our students, catalyzing change within the schools. Um, and also, of course, we're focusing now not just on graduation um, from high school and acceptance to college, but also continuing through college. And we're working on post-secondary success. Yeah, and so if, thank you so much for your time. If there's any questions, we'd love to answer them. Thank you so much. We'll take questions from our board members after we've taken public comment. Mr. Barrios, do we have any public comments on this item? Yes, we have three public comments. We have uh, Adolfo Mercado, Margaret West, and Mercedes Maria McCumber. Good evening, Board President Ryan, members of the Sacramento City Unified School District Board of Education, and Superintendent Aguilar. My name is Adolfo Mercado, and I work for the California Charter Schools Association, or CCSA, as a regional manager for Northern California. CCSA is a statewide nonprofit, membership based advocacy organization that supports California's high quality charter school movement. Academic accountability is a key ingredient in the success of California's charter schools and the students they serve. CCSA is leading the way in accountability for charter schools by establishing clear and transparent academic performance expectations and providing resources to schools to foster a continuous cycle of improvement. <coughs> Aspire Capital Heights Academy meets the criteria for renewal under state law, and the school has exceeded CCSA's minimum criteria for renewal for this year after review by CCSA's academic performance team. Therefore, it is without reservation that I urge the board to renew Aspire Capital Heights Academy. Thank you. Thank you, Adolfo. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good evening, uh, board members and superintendent. My name is Mercedes Maria McCumber, and I'm the Dean of Instruction at Capital Heights Academy. As I was reflecting on what I was going to say in these two minutes, I decided to walk into our gym that's filled with our Title I Academic Achievement Awards, four to be exact, National Recognized California Blue Ribbon, and California Distinguished School Banners. Looking up at these, I felt pride, accomplishment, and ownership. I felt these things because I've been at Capitol Heights since the beginning. We've worked really hard, to, sorry, to help our Oak Park community. It's my home. I stay with Aspire and Capitol Heights Academy because I believe in the direct opportunity to make a difference in our students' lives. My journey with Aspire and Capitol Heights Academy started fresh out of the credential program, and I was hired as a K-1 teacher. I later moved into a lead position, Director of Intervention, Central Valley Instructional Coach, and now the Dean of Instruction. I fell in love with the school, community, students, parents, and staff right away. Capitol Heights Academy is not only my second home, but the place where I grew up and learned how to push rigorous education, support all learners in building life skills, and sprinkle in joy whenever possible. I love when alumni come to visit our school, and they do often. Just the other day, I had a student walk into the gym and say, are you still here? I instantly felt old, but also excited because I recognized the voice was a former K-1 student. She shared with me that she was graduating high school and was going to move on to UC Davis. I instantly started crying and hugging her. I told her how proud I was and excited. She shared with me that because of Capitol Heights Academy, she was able to be successful in secondary and in high school. She told me she truly believed in our school and had taught her many things. She had went on her first grade field trip to UC Davis. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone, my name is Margaret West and I am a teacher at Capitol Heights Academy, lovingly known as Cha. 
And I'm the proud team leader of my classroom, and I say team leader because alongside my students, I've watched them evolve into compassionate, empathetic, revolutionary humans on their best days. <laughs> I chose to join CHA because I've lived and loved in the community since I was five. The children that I teach are a direct mirror to the soul of what Oak Park was and will always be. This year, I had the privilege of taking my students to Stanford University. Leading up to the trip, we discussed what the purpose of the trip was, what we wanted, and what it meant to be there. When we walked on the campus, my kids interviewed the tour guide like he was the applicant, and they were the admissions board. They asked about scholarship opportunities, tuition, GPA, and sang the guide happy birthday. <laughs> their thirst for knowledge and their willingness to love on a stranger with a shared experience is why I serve CHA, or when kids hold each other accountable for their learning, when kids make choices to succeed and sacrifice what's preferred. I heard Lia Jeanne, a student with a troubled educational history, tell her classmate, you better pay attention. You don't want to be in college confused about this lesson. When kids beg for research projects and extra opportunities to learn and take risks. When my student Lauren put her arm around her group and tell me, now this is family. When a student who has lost her mother to incarceration celebrate and honor her mother with her education in class. Those are the moments where I know that I'm in the right place doing the right work. Our kids deserve to continue to an instructionally strong fourth grade education. When you see your student light up because her classmate's mother braided her hair at a resource fair, or when a parent brings a student a birthday treat knowing it's his first year without his mom, you know that this is more than brick and mortar, but a heartbeat of the Oak Park community, where we deserve to stay in our charter renew so that these magic moments can withstand gentrification and materialize into a revolution to fight for what we call home. So to all the members of the board, I ask that you vote to renew the charter for Capitol Heights Academy so that this heart and many others continues to beat for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. And our, our final public comment. Hello, good evening to you all. Thank you for your time. Um, my name is T.R. Netter, and I am the lead K-1 teacher at Capitol Heights Academy. Um, however, my time at Capitol Heights started back in 2007 when I started off as a campus motivator. And in fact, I've held many roles at CHA. I have been a CHA parent as my now 15-year-old daughter has matriculated through Capitol Heights, along with an after-school educator, a crossing guard, a technology teacher, a resident teacher, and now again, a K-1 lead teacher. I have a strong connection to Capitol Heights Academy, and I love and appreciate the fact that CHA is more than a school. Um, it's the cornerstone of our Oak Park community. The entire staff, from Dr. Sanders to the teaching staff to the support staff, work tirelessly to create meaningful learning opportunities for our scholars. We work hard to form relationships with not just the scholars, but with the whole family. And this is what keeps me rooted at Capitol Heights Academy. I have seen many generations of students over the years, and I've had the pleasure of teaching many, many sets of siblings. I can remember a mother of one of my second grade students being pregnant with her youngest child that I then ended up having that child in one of my last kindergarten mm -hmm. classes. Um, this was because of the strong bond that we had, and we were able to form throughout just both of our times at Capitol Heights Academy. Another mother of a former student of mine asked me to be her youngest child's godmother. And I have really taken on that role, again, because of our strong connections, the community that we have formed at Capitol Heights Academy. The kindergarten scholars that I taught years ago still come back to Capitol Heights Academy to this day because this is home to them. We are an amazing school that has recently faced some challenges, but yes, that's life. However, that doesn't take away from the level of excellence that has established over the years CHA to become a California distinguished school or a federal blue ribbon school. When I walk into our gym, I am filled with pride as I know many awards that have been received. And I know that there's a high level of commitment that we can bring CHA back to that level of excellence. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll take questions and comments from board members. It looks like I don't have, oh, okay. Um, board member Minnick. Thank you, President Ryan. Um, just a couple quick uh, questions. I understand this is a, uh, an, a K-5 uh, school, and, and typically our traditional district-run schools are um, a K-6 model. So I was kind of curious, typically where do your students transition to for sixth grade? Um, so if you could answer that. And then my other question is, um, can you give us an idea of what percentage of your students um, reside in our district boundaries and versus uh, students who come from outside of the district uh, to your school? So your first question, um, 
these students from our school matriculate into, we have, well, the, the Aspire model is a K-5 model, 612 model. They're usually on the same campus or close. Um, Cha is not close to a 612 model for Aspire, so we matriculate to our PS7 or St. Hope, which is about a block away uh, into that school zone. Um, as far as the second question, um, about 65% reside within a Sac City district, um, and others reside into Twin Rivers and other districts of nature, but Sac City, about 65% of the children. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you, Board Member Wu. Thank you. So um, if you will look to your slide number five, uh, it has, a, it's entitled, Our Five-Year Plan Reflects, yeah, that's it. If you look at the last row under growth, what is your Memphis region that you're referring to? So there's, um, in each of the columns, it refers to a Memphis five-year enrollment, Memphis, 100% uh, of Memphis five-year enrollment target eight what's, Mem what's Memphis got to do with Sacramento? Um, nothing. That's just an explanation of our Aspire five-year plan. And so as part of Aspire, we are expanding to the Memphis region. We have uh, schools that are members of the Achievement School District in Memphis. And so, yeah, that slide is a overall Aspire five-year growth plan. So that explains not just Capitol Heights, but the entire organization. Thank you. I don't want to be picky, but, you know, you're before Sac City Unified. I tailor it to Sacramento. Sure, but I did want to give scope of what our organization does, and so you can also see on this slide we included that we serve 16,000 students uh, California-wide with 40 schools in California and, and Memphis. So just to give a scope and understanding for the board of what our organization does and how many students we serve. Thank you. Thank you. We have no other board member comments. I did want to take a moment to thank all of the families from um, our Aspire Capitol Heights Academy for coming out tonight. I will say I've been honored to know both Aspire principals and teachers and um, the students within Oak Park that are going to Capitol Heights Academy are doing remarkable things often against great odds with supports that are building a college going culture. And in fact, my daughter's best friend was a recognized annual scholar, Kennedy McCree, at Aspire Capital Heights Academy. So I'm very proud of her and proud of the work you're doing within our community. So with that, this is not an item for action. So we will be seeing you back soon. Moving on to item 9.2 public hearing on the renewal charter petition and petitioned admissions preferences for Bowling Green Charter School. This uh, agenda item 9.2 is the public hearing for the charter renewal and petition admission uh, preferences for uh, Bowling Green Charter School. And uh, I'm pleased to have with me to my left uh, Principal Silvia Silva Torres from Bowling Green Chacon. And to her left, uh, we have Principal Susan Gibson from Bowling Green McCoy. Uh, the contents of uh, this presentation is uh, the same as the prior. <coughs> Bowling Green is a single charter uh, comprised of uh, two small yeah. learning communities. Uh, the first that I'm going to present for you is uh, Chacon Language and Science Academy. Uh, I'd like to uh, first talk about their enrollment and location. Uh, their enrollment for last school year was 363 serving students in K through 6. And uh, Chacon is located 6807 Franklin Boulevard on district-owned property. Uh, the balance of the information, that will uh, be for the collective Bowling Green. And they have been in operations for 25 years with an opening date of July 1st, 1993. They are a dependent charter school with uh, their renewal petition submitted on January 19th. Board action date is scheduled for March 15th and their current charter is due to expire June 30th, 2018. The second small learning community, uh, we have uh, Ken McCoy Academy for Science, and uh, they are located uh, uh, adjacent to the Chacon facility at 4211 Turnbridge Drive. Uh, their enrollment last year was 461, also serving students K through 6.
We talked about the purpose of a public hearing as it relates to AB 1360. And uh, in uh, Bowling Green's charter petition, uh, the listed preferences for them, they include siblings of students currently enrolled, students living within the boundaries of our district, children of staff members, and all other California residents. Uh, our next steps, uh, once again, the governing board uh, approves petition admission preferences. Uh, they are slated on uh, tonight's consent agenda. Uh, same regarding the district staff, we will continue our review of their practices and petition. Uh, once again, the governing board must grant or deny their charter within 60 days of receipt unless there is a 30-day uh, extension mutually agreed. And I would like to know that Bowling Green Charter School has mutually agreed to a 30-day extension. Board action is currently scheduled for March 15th. Uh, with that, uh, Bowling Green, uh, they will have some commentary. Thank you. Good evening, uh, President Ryan, members of the board, Superintendent Aguilar. We're extremely pleased to be here tonight um, to present about Bowling Green. It's our heart and our happy home. Uh, before I get any further, though, I'd like to just ask everyone that's here to support Bowling Green to please stand for a moment. Thank you. You guys can sit down while I talk. <laughs> Um, but short and sweet, uh, we're very proud of our history of serving the Bowling Green community in South Sacramento. The school has been operating as a dependent charter of Sacramento City Unified School District since 1993. During these 25 years as a charter, the school has worked diligently to meet the needs of the local community. Staff strives to provide a stable and welcoming environment that addresses the social, emotional, and academic needs of students and families. This commitment can be evidenced by the number of families who choose to return with children and grandchildren and refer other family members to enroll as well. We are here tonight to encourage support for approval of our charter renewal through the year 2023, and thank you for your time in considering our petition for renewal. Do we have public comment? Yes, we do. Um, you could line up in order when you hear your name, please. Allison Symes, Marinda Burton, Nicole Gordon, Soraya Yang, Yova Santa Maria, and David Rodriguez. Okay. And I do want to remind everyone as we have our public comment. Uh, individuals approach the dais. We do have um, for our children in the audience child care next door and a healthy snack for anyone who would like to have their kids take advantage of that while they wait for this item to be heard. Um, good evening, President Ryan, board members, and Sup Superintendent Aguilera. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Allison Symes, and I apologize because I knew my voice would shake. Because when I am passionate and a little bit nervous, that's what happens. So I apologize in advance. I've been privileged to teach in Sac City Unified for 18 years. And I chose this district because I believe in our quest and our mission to educate all children, regardless of their circumstances. For 14 years, I taught at Cesar Chavez, which is a wonderful school. But like many of you, I thought it was time for a new challenge. So I pursued a different position. And four years ago, I was lucky enough to be offered a position at Bowling Green on the McCoy Academy campus. Sacramento Unified School District has always encouraged the schools to provide differentiation to students to meet their needs. Um, as a dependent charter, Bowling Green has been able to provide school differentiation. The dependent charter model allows the Bowling Green campuses to quickly adjust curriculum and personnel to best support our students. Our camp one way our campus has adjusted to provide support is by looping with our students. Our amazing kindergarten teachers provide the foundation necessary for our students to be successful socially and academically. Students enter our system of looping. For example, a first grade student will have the same teacher in second grade. This allows the second year of our loops to hit the ground running. We already know our students. Students are comfortable with each other and they understand the expectations of our classroom. For many students whose home situations are not always 
um, stable or, cha or change a lot, having the same teacher two years in a row provides some much needed stability. Many of our families choose our campus because of our looping model. We get to know parents and families at a much deeper level, which leads to a more powerful partnership between home and school. This neatly dovetails with Sacramento City Unified's district desire to serve the whole child in partnership with their families. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, board members, superintendent. Um, my name is Marinda Burton. I've been with the district for about six years um, doing teacher training. And this year, I have had the wonderful pleasure of getting to serve on the Bowling Green Charter School campus at both Chacon and McCoy. Um, SCUSD is a very large district. That comes with a lot of assets. We have diversity. We are able to leverage resources for our initiatives. But it also comes with some challenges, as I'm sure you know. Sometimes it can feel like steering an aircraft carrier. <laughs> uh, the status of Bowling Green as a dependent charter has given it the flexibility to take advantage of those leveraged resources at the district for initiatives that particularly meet the needs of our community, while also having the flexibility to make quick changes in program, in budget, in personnel, in instruction that really are meeting our students and our families' needs right when they need them. Uh, the task bestowed upon you tonight is to decide, is this group of educators, is this team, do they have the capacity to make those decisions with skill, with integrity? And I just would like to tell you that as I've been working with them over the past few years, I have not met a team of educators that is more caring, compassionate, or capable of making those types of decisions. So I urge you to renew their charter, and I thank you in advance for supporting the work that we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board and the superintendent. My name is Nicole Gordon, and I am the special education teacher at Bowling Green Chacon. When I arrived on campus two years ago, I was met with open arms, and I was brought on as a teammate to support the students. I soon learned that the teachers, the administrator, and I share a common desire for the students to be active learners high achievers, to have confidence in themselves, to explore, and to be lifelong learners. We strive to be an accepting and loving school for the students of all backgrounds and abilities. All of us collectively working at Chacon remind them to always do their best and to work hard regardless of the assignment or the project because we do believe in them. On a daily basis, the teachers, administrator, and I collaborate scheduling of projects and assignments to better serve the students. We discuss my schedule so I can support the students during assessments, projects, Socratic seminars, I3 comprehension discussions, and daily assignments. During some of our Thursday meetings, we review the classwork strategies provided to the students and brainstorm other ways to help them access the curriculum, creating a greater effective learning environment for both teachers and students. The students know that they have access to adult support and are accountable to all of us. They know that we all expect them and want them to do their best and to never give up because we are in this together. Team Chacon supports each and every student, no matter how hard we have to work, in order to create successful, functional, future members of society. So please vote to renew our charter. Thank you. Thank you. This is too high. Hello. Hola, mi nombre es Soraya y tengo nueve años. Estoy en el cuarto grado en el salón de Mr. Martinez. Solo tengo un minuto y voy a hablar en español lo más que pueda. Tengo cinco años en la escuela Bowling Green. Estoy aprendiendo español, música y tecnología. Mi hermano menor también va a la escuela y mi hermanito va a asistir el próximo año. Mi hermano... Mi papá dice que esta escuela es una mina de oro para las personas que saben minar el, el oro. Y yo sé minar el oro. 
Por favor, es importante renovar esta escuela de charter para que los niños como yo tengamos la oportunidad de aprender en nuestro idioma. Finalmente, ¿dónde estaría yo sin esta escuela? Voten así para renovar la, la escuela Bowling Green otros cinco años. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Yova Santa Maria. I am the parent of a first, second, and sixth grader at Bowling Green Chacon. I am also the vice president of our PTA as well as a member of our steering committee. Being part of this committee gives me the opportunity to not only support our school but to be actively involved in the decision making that comes with those positions. And our school isn't lucky to just have me, but as you can see behind me, is to have the support of all of the parents who are willing and able to be part of our great school's community. At Chacon, we are an extended family in which we rely and help each other as a family does. Chacon is fortunate to have so many families who are always there to lend a helping hand. Recently, we had two families who sacrificed their weekend and helped improve our garden by laying down new mulch and planting new plants. And this is only one example of the many things that our parents are willing to do in order to have our school be great. This is what makes us great. It is a relationship between teachers, staff, and parents. We are there to lend a helping hand and support each other as a great family and community does. I am proud to be part of the Chacon family and hope that when you make the decision to renew our charter, you take into account all of us who showed up here today to support them and who rely on it to teach our children. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Board President Ryan, Superintendent Aguilar, members of the Board Cabinet. My name is David Rodriguez, Principal at West Campus High School. Tonight I stand in front of you as a proud father of two little girls that attend Bowling Green <laughs> Chacon Science, a Language and Science Academy. Over the years, I've seen my daughters grow academically and blossom socially and emotionally. The staff at Bowling Green work extremely hard to create an environment of success for all students and ensure that the parents feel welcomed at that school. So I ask you tonight to, to renew the charter petition for Bowling Green. Um, having my daughters, I love what I do as a principal, but the best part of my day is coming home and having a conversation with my daughters, asking them what did they learn at school today. While having those conversations, the best part is seeing their, their expressions, having the smile on their faces because they're so excited to being at that school. So again, I ask you to renew the, char the charter petition for Bowling Green Elementary School. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a stepping stool. It's just. Hi. Hi. I am a student at Bowling Green McCoy Academy, and I have been at Bowling Green for about four years. I started when I was in kindergarten. I have never met the more, the most friendliest teachers and staff I've, in Bowling Green McCoy. I really hope that I can keep seeing them every year, and I can look forward to seeing them every year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello? Good Testing. evening. Okay. <laughs> Hi, you guys. My name is Sheng Tao, and it is a privilege to be in front of you guys. Um, I'm the program manager of the after school program for both the McCoy and the Chacon at Bowling Green. So um, I have about a huge amount of uh, after school students with me here today um, to talk about the um, charter renewal and I just want to speak about what we have in program and the effect of the students coming into program and how we have been working together. Um, I know that with our mission in after school we try to embrace the individuality of our students and at the same time work collectively as a group and the community. So um, it is an honor to be here with you guys and thank you so much. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Raleigh Sbir. I'm a parent at uh, Capital City Independent School, uh, uh, Independent Study School on the uh, corner of Florin and 24. I'm here on behalf of the recent news that came to my head yesterday regarding that the Department of, uh, I don't know if it's education or the superintendent were trying to decrease the teacher on campus. I don't know what bring about this you know, notion. However, I'm here to let you know that my three children have been attending this school for the past 15 years. My oldest is going to be 16 and is in college. Okay, and uh, he was attending this school since he was in kindergarten. And it's not only my child, many students that are benefiting from this independent study. I uh, will appreciate it that uh, the, your committee will rethink about it, that reducing the teacher number on the campus will affect the quality of education that those children are getting because then they will not have the kind of quality time that the teachers spend with them. They have to decrease their time. And now they're even teaching them on a group level, which they've never done before in, the, you know, in that particular school. And it's helping them with their, you know, point, um, what presentation, things that they've never used to normally do from, from, for them from sixth grade. They're doing it this year in that school because we have these teachers that are working so hard to produce the best of students. I really appreciate all the effort because I've been working with both the staffs for the last 15 years. I will appreciate if you guys can rethink this situation, not decreasing the teacher on the campus. I don't know if you are planning to replace them if you take them away. So I didn't know what the plan is, but please try to rethink it. I don't think it's something that will be of beneficial to the school, to the students, and to the type of education that we offer in that place. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate um, it. Just a reminder, we're speaking on the Bowling Green Charter School, Chacon Language and Science Academy. Now. I see. Okay. I see. Okay. Thank um, you. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Anyway. And this is our final speaker of the evening. Hi, my name is Kevin, and I'm here to tell that that Bowling Green Chacon is the best school in here in Sacramento, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we, my family and I, hope that the teachers renovate to teach the kids, so the school gets more smarter and the kids get smarter, and this school might is the best. Thank you. Just a reminder, are these are there more cards for the Bowling Green Chacon? Okay, so I just want to let everyone know, um, if we had known that we were going to have more than 10 speakers, we would have done one minute per speaker instead of two minutes, so we're now running far behind. This is not an action item tonight. This is just an item for informational hearing. I will allow you one minute to speak because I really believe in, in the power of youth voice, but moving forward, we have to be much more cognizant of the time. Okay, thank you. Um, Hello, so my name is um, Mati Calhoun. I am working with Ms. Jing Tao for the after school program at Bowling Green. Um, I have had the pleasure of being there for about five years and um, I can honestly say that the amount of people that I've met just working there and the relationships that I've built working there has been very, very, they've been very, very strong and like sticky strong. Um, I feel like without Bowling Green being there, it will be like a huge hole just missing out of the city. And that's something that I believe that we all can agree to. Um, my students and the students that we all service, they are very, very smart individuals. And that school means a lot to them. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments from board members? Okay, we have no questions or comments. I do want to say um, thank you to all of the families, teachers, and young people who came out to make their voices heard tonight. A couple years ago, I had an opportunity to work with the Bowling Green Chacon community when a tragedy hit the school. And I will tell you the, the love, compassion, and willingness to come together as a community of support was quite remarkable, and I appreciate your leadership.
Item 10.1, discuss and approve the naming of C.K. McClatchy High School's athletic field. All right, good evening, President Ryan, members of the board, Superintendent Aguilar. Tonight, we're very happy to bring forward to you um, a proposal. Um, Ms. Sorry. Allen, if you'll please hold for one second. For those of you exiting the building, we're beginning. It's very hard to hear. If you can please um, take your conversation outside. Thank you again. So tonight, we're very happy to bring to you for approval um, or for consideration the naming of our newly renovated C.K. McClatchy track and field facility, obviously at C.K. McClatchy High School. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Principal Peter Lambert, and he's got a couple of other folks he'd like to introduce as well. Good evening, Board President Ryan, Superintendent Aguilar, and members of the Sacramento City Unified School District Board of Education. A little bit of background on the process that we went through. First, uh, McClatchy has been in existence for over 80 years. We have approximately 40,000 graduates, many of them very distinguished, many of them serving here within our own school district. We're the largest school in the Sacramento City Unified School District, and of course, we serve the most, the most students. Our enrollment continues to increase, and we have a record, nearly 800 students that are applying for, uh, uh, applying for open enrollment to come and attend McClatchy High School. That includes many uh, students whose parents are alumni, also many students whose parents are staff in Sacramento City, who are teachers, classified, and administrators. And they have a choice of where to send their students, and they choose to send their students to McClatchy. With all of these distinguished graduates, it was a very challenging process that we went through to honor um, the people that we chose uh, this evening. We had a meeting of parents, staff, students, community members on November 6th to discuss the possible naming of the sports complex. And there were many names that surfaced during that time uh, from all of our, of course, nearly 40,000 graduates. Uh, the proposal was brought forward to the facilities committee on January 16th and was recommended to move forward for the board for consideration. The proposal of the, was unanimously in all processes brought forward for Jack Major and Al Beta track and field complex. And now I would like to introduce to you members of our alumni group, Restore the Roar, our president, Mr. Dennis Ishikawa, and uh, member Bob Sertich, who will talk to you a little bit more about. Thank you, Peter. We have about two minutes remaining for this. Thank you, President Ryan and board members. Bob Sertich, uh, founding member of Restore the Roar, 1967 graduate of McClatchy, three siblings graduated from McClatchy, three children graduated from McClatchy. Uh, the reason we are interested in having the, the track, and thank you very much for the new track and field. Our soccer team is doing very well this winter. We have 100 kids coming out for track, which is huge. Um, Jack Major and Al Beta. Jack Major was the first coach track coach at McClatchy High School, won seven section titles, went on to be track coach at City College and a dean at City College and Kasumnas River. Al Beta was a student of his who was a runner at McClatchy, graduated in 1952, went on to be a um, uh, run at UC Berkeley, track coach at Mira Loma and American River College. But these two gentlemen were key to getting Sacramento on the track map. They worked together after Al became an adult and brought 1968 uh, AAU championship here, brought several international meets to Hughes Stadium. Uh, Mr. Beta was an assistant Olympic track coach twice and a trainer on another team. He also headed up the USA USSR meet. Jack Major is, is just well known as one of the foundations of the track community in Sacramento and that's why we think it's appropriate, because we view this new McClatchy track as a community track, as well as a McClatchy track. So that's where we are. Thank you for that history. 
May I add um, one thing that Bob, uh, to piggyback off of what Bob, these two gentlemen go hand in hand. The late Jack Major took Al Beta under his wings when Al Beta was a senior in high school, being raised by a single mother who passed away. So these two gentlemen are intertwined uh, by the hip, if you will, mm. and then continuing on to collaborate to make Sacramento the track capital that it is today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing that beautiful story. Real quick picture, in case you haven't seen it, um, of the finished product at McClatchy. Very proud of it. Thank you. Do we have any public comment this time? No public comments. I will take questions from board members <clears throat> or comments. Board Member Hansen. Let me thank our staff and Nathaniel in particular for uh, we had to kind of learn what the process was for uh, naming a facility and uh, you know nothing nothing is easy in bureaucracy so there was uh, some you know a timeline that's been multiple months uh, in the process of doing this so thanks very much for that and then uh, uh, special thanks to the Restore the Roar. Dennis and Bob have been, you know, such great supporters in the past, and your continuing support of our students and the school. Uh, it's definitely uh, noticed, and it's definitely paying off. And you know, student athletes who are excelling in so many different ways. And I think we're going to continue to see champions come out of McClatchy that are going to learn that academics and athletics go hand in hand and can be really successful. And lastly, I'll just say that. I think it was very innovative by the facilities committee uh, to come up with the idea for a 10 year naming period. It's something that we thought would give an opportunity for us to evaluate uh, the name in a reasonable period of time. And it could very well be that it's the correct name to continue for a new 10 year period. But I think it's something that gives us you know, more uh, ability to uh, move with the times and uh, set, make the assessment. So I think that was something that was very unique uh, in this proposal as well. And I'm you know, very proud uh, to support this uh, proposal at our great school. Thank you, Board Member Hanson. We have a final comment from Board Member Bridget. Thank you, President Ryan. Um, I wanted to thank Member Hanson for bringing this to the Facilities Committee at our last meeting. And um, I don't know if we pointed out that it would be a 10-year proposal for the name, and I think that that's something that we should think about for future projects as well. Um, and one question that I had at the facilities meeting is, and it still stands, there will be little or no cost to the district for this, correct? <laughs> Does that still stand? <laughs> Absolutely correct. Thank if <laughs> um, this is approved, uh, we, we restore the roar. We'll go out to the community to raise funds to get the marquee and, and such put into place. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate your energy and efforts. Um, this is an item for action. Can I please have the student board members preferential vote? And can I have a motion? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Item 10.2, approve AB 1200 disclosure, cost and approval of the tentative agreements with bargaining unit, uh, the Service Employee International Union Local 1021 SEIU. Good evening, Board President Ryan, Superintendent Aguilar, and members of the board. We are here to talk with you about three items, the first of which has to do with approving SEIU tentative agreement. We have a number of components to the tentative agreement want to talk with you about them. SEIU is our largest classified bargaining unit, making up of, of transportation um, attendants and bus drivers and custodians and office staff and instructional aides um, who do the important, lots of the important work in the district. This is a three-year agreement, effective from 17 through 20, with reopeners along the way. As you hear about this, do you want to highlight some things that, that, that will be shared in more detail, retiree contributions, that will be something new for this bargaining unit to play towards um, benefits that they would receive as retirees, and also working to address the vacation liability. You'll hear more about that through this uh, presentation as well. 
Good evening, Board President, members of the board, and Superintendent Aguilar. With the recent passing of AB 670, um, after board approval, it will require us to work very closely with SEIU to determine a clear process in the staffing of our morning duties and our noon duties. Um, as you see, the salary increases in the PowerPoint presentation. Just to summarize the presentation, the total salary increase for this bargaining unit is approximately 11.44%. In 2015, the board approved a district-wide classification study to be conducted. You will see some additional increases for certain classifications due to the results of the study. The district and our labor partners were involved in the hiring of public sector as the consulting firm to complete this work. You will also see that there are adjustments to our instructional aids child development since the new law requires that they hold at least an AA degree in order to work in this type of setting. Starting next year, six hour employees or greater will start contributing to the retirement benefits um, at one third of 1%, which will be ongoing. I have my colleague, Ted. Good evening, uh, Board Member Ryan, uh, Board President Ryan, uh, Superintendent Aguilar, and members of the board. Uh, I'll talk about um, Article 9, uh, which talks about uh, adjustments were made for bus driver meal allowances, as well as safety footwear to reflect uh, current needs and costs. Uh, also, Article 9 assignments, additionally, agreement was reached on more uniform dress for food service. Uh, assistance and under Article 11, agreement was reached that employees may cash out up to 30 days of vacation time. Uh, under Article 12, agreement was reached on an increase in childbirth leave or adoption leave with pay and sick leave that may be used for paid family medical leave to care for an ill family member. And Article 12 leaves under most conditions uh, classified employees who move into certificated positions uh, will still have rights back to their classified jobs and language regarding voluntary transfers were cl was clarified to allow but not limit such transfers. New language also allows flexibility uh, for case-by-case -case review on non-need base uh, on as-needs basis for possible transfers. This contract actually, um, we also had to add language to comply with a um, new law regarding the new employee orientation. This is something new, we covered that. Um, in addition, uh, to get to this point, it took many meetings, a lot of work from both sizes. We will not always agree, we often, often agree to disagree, but we treat, we treat each other with respect, and for that we thank the SIU negotiation team uh, we recommend approval of the agreement for SEIU Local 1021. We are, are available to answer any questions. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. Okay. Um, board member questions. I actually do have a question. Uh, slide 9 leaves Article 12. The district increased childbirth leave from one day to three days leave with pay for birth of their child or beginning on the day of the final legal adoption of a child. Is that in addition to California law? So I, I guess what I'm curious about is what is the total leave allowed? This is an adjustment? It is an adjustment. We do have language in there that, that allows employees to take various times of leave. FMLA is included in there various times. This is an addition and an increase from the previous one day that was provided to them, increasing it to three outside of that. So what you're saying is FMLA and then the state mandates essentially are, are first, and then we will pay one from one day to three days now. Previously one, now up to three. Okay, so I appreciate that clarification. I do still think that only three days of paid leave from the district in addition to what's mandated by law is not overly generous. But I do appreciate the other provisions of the contract. 
Any other questions? So this is an item for action. Do we have a move to approve? The, we have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Oh, and our student board members, preferential vote. Uh, this was a closed session uh, matter, so she cannot vote on the ABs. Oh, okay. But it's an open session. So it, it's listed as an action, but what you're saying is this was a decision that was already made. So we Well, it was a discussion in closed, therefore... She cannot vote on any closed session I matters. see. So, Sarah, I'm sorry. Thank you so much, um, Jerry, for, for providing that clarification. So we had a motion. We had a second. We had unanimous approval. But we do not, in this case, have a student board member preferential vote. You'll have to bear with us. This is new territory for us. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. You. Item 10.3, approve. Uh, AB 1200 disclosure cost and approval of the tentative agreements with the Teamsters Local 150. Good evening, Board President Ryan, Superintendent Aguilar, and members of the board. Our Teamsters partners consist of the um, plant managers at our school sites, um, at all of our school sites, and this agreement with them, this tentative agreement that we bring forward to you is also a three-year agreement. It would go through 2020 and again have reopeners in, um, in additional years to come forward. Uh, highlights with this one also include employee contributions to retirement. That's something that did not previously exist, as well as vacation liability being addressed through some language to, to cap. So Cindy, or I'm sorry, Ted? Uh, Article six, compensation. Uh, across the board, salary increases were agreed to over three years, with a 2.5% increase effective January 1st, 2017, uh, a 2.5 increase effective January 1st, 2018, and a 3.5 increase effective July 2018. Uh, longevity increases were also agreed to on a percentage basis, starting with 10 years at 2% of base salary, 16 years at 3.5% of base, 19 years at 5%, uh, 22 years at 6%, 25 years at 8%, and 30 years of service at 9.5% of base salary. Uh, Article 7, fringe benefits. Uh, commencing with 2018-19 school year, Teamsters will contribute to their retirement benefits at one-third of 1% 1 of base salary. Uh, Article 9, assignments. The contract was clarified regarding site plant operations managers and facilities operations specialists covering two sites. They will be paid at five ranges higher uh, in, uh, when that is uh, necessary. And Article 11 vacations agreement was reached regarding maximum vacation accrual and cash outs. I mean, um one, one of the goals of, the, of our district has been to reduce the crew um, vacation liability, and this contract um, accomplished that. We, we, we were able to accomplish that. Again, we want to thank um, the Teamsters leadership team for working with us and all the issues um, to Calara meetings, and we appreciate their, their work, and we recommend uh, approval of this contract. Thank you. Do we have any public comment at this time? No public comment. Do we have any questions from board members? We have no questions from board members. So we're going to take a motion to approve the tentative agreement, item 10.3. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. The motion carries. Moving on to item 10.4. Approve AB 1200 disclosure cost and approval of the tentative agreements for the Teamsters Classified Supervisors Local 150. Good evening, Board President Ryan, Superintendent <laughs> Aguilar, members of the board. Um, we have our, our third and final item before you this evening. You can skip all of them. <laughs> nice to be there. For the, um, <laughs> the Teamsters Classified Supervisors, this, this bargaining unit formerly was known as CSA, the Classified Supervisors Association. Um, there is some merging that's happening, and so now they are TCS, the Teamsters Classified Supervisors. As with um, 
The others, this is a three-year agreement going through 2020 with some reopeners along the way. What we would want to highlight to you in this tentative agreement before you are, again, the retiree contributions, which did not exist for this bargaining unit, the vacation liability, but then also that this bargaining unit was one that did not receive um, health benefit coverage for, for families or 100% for the employees. So there are some adjustments in that area as well. So specifically in terms of fringe benefits, agreement was reached that the district would cover 100% of Kaiser HMO rate for employees and under, for one family member. And classified supervisors uh, would contribute one-third of 1% 1 of base salary toward retirement benefits. Article 11, vacations. Uh, limits were agreed to, vacation accruals and cash outs. Uh, additional agreement was reached regarding supervi uh, supervision conflicts that resulted from the merging of classified supervisors and Teamsters. Such positions will be removed from the bargaining units to avoid those conflicts. And we'd like to thank that um, distance classified supervisors for working with us and be open with, with ideas and going back and forth. And we also recommend approval of the contract for Teamsters Classified Supervisors Local 150. Thank you so much. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. We have questions from board members. Um, you have your finger on your button. Do you want to ask? No, I was going to move. Okay, let's uh, uh, entertain a motion to move. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, thank you. Um, item 11.0, consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Our, oh, so we do, sorry, student preferential vote. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> student board member Nguyen, Nguyen votes yes on all open sessions, items within the agenda. Fabulous. Okay, so that motion carries. We are on to item 12.0, communications. First, 12.1, employee organizational of reports. TCS, SCTA. Good evening. My name is David Fisher, president of the Sacramento City Teachers Association. First of all, say congratulations to our labor partners for getting their TAs approved. I wanted to bring you up to date on a few very exciting initiatives that we've been working on with the district lately. First, tomorrow evening, we'll be holding a district showcase for prospective teachers and educators who we want to encourage to apply for positions in the district. We understand there's over 100 that have RSVP'd, so that should be fun. Um, with that, with the significant changes that we collectively agreed to in our new contract, we're strongly encouraged by our joint efforts with the district to step up and recruit staff <clears throat> into our district. Staffing concerns are resolved by more than just recruitment. Retention, as you know, make, plays a major role. A few statistics here are worth considering. In the last two years, approximately 180 educators per year have left the district. Of note, only about 70 of those 180 were retirements, or 38%. So what can be done to hold on to the other 62%? We're working with the district to dig into these and other factors that will enable every student to learn from a fully credentialed educator who reflects the diversity of our district. Speaking of diversity, in these turbulent times, we think it's imperative that we as educators speak out against injustice and use, of, use our voice to robustly advocate as the California Employment Relations Act allows us to do. Last week, sadly, district administrators launched a highly politicized, absurdly inflammatory, and completely unjust and defamatory attack on SCTA and its leadership. Earlier today, we emailed you a copy of the unfair labor practice and grievances that we have filed that shed light on the unfounded retaliatory basis of the unprincipled and bogus attack. For the record, and with a long track record of action to back us up, 
SCTA strongly opposes racism, homophobia, sexism, and other forms of discrimination, and will strongly and robustly advocate on behalf of educators and students when confronted with such ugly attacks that have no place in our school district. Given the not so distant past of this district in refusing to take action against certain administrators, including granting payouts to, vic to his victims, and then approving no-show jobs for him at the Cerna Center, we have proposed to the district that we move to immediate and expedited arbitration to address the very serious concerns raised by educators so that we refocus our energies on making Sac City the destination district for California. Finally, I'm very proud to announce that SCTA was awarded the statewide Human Rights Award from 335,000 California Teachers Association for our continued work in fighting social justice. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, SEIU, Teamsters, UPE. Okay. Moving on to our district parent advisory committees, the community advisory committee, the district English learner advisory committee, the local control accountability plan parent advisory committee. Item 12.3, superintendent's report. Thank you, President Ryan. Good evening, everyone. I would like to start um, this evening by mentioning how fortunate we are to have uh, such dedicated uh, and skilled staff in our schools and how critical um, it is uh, that um, we have team members uh, that are trying to achieve um, our mission in Sac City. Um, I say that because uh, our Human Resources Department is engaged, as President Fisher just uh, mentioned, in a massive teacher recruitment effort that I want to encourage everyone to help us uh, have teachers apply. Um, some of the recruitment events uh, we have scheduled in the upcoming week, uh, uh, tomorrow, again, as uh, President Fisher also mentioned, we are co-sponsoring with uh, SCTA an informational session for teachers here at the Cerna Center. On Wednesday, February 7th, we will meet here again to recruit college students from our Sac State intern cohort. Uh, and these are just uh, the recent events. A number of other events are in the works right now, and I encourage everyone to visit our website, uh, scusd.edu uh, slash teach, for the latest updates and information regarding recruitment events and how to apply for a teaching job in Sac City. I also want to share uh, some of the other opportunities that I've had to meet uh, with staff at school sites. Uh, earlier this week, uh, Member Minnick and I had the pleasure of visiting Camellia Basic uh, to meet um, many of our teachers um, and uh, visit that school site. Um, among the teachers that I uh, had the uh, privilege of meeting uh, was Miss Valerie Allens, uh, who I uh, understand uh, has been teaching at Camellia for 33 and a half years. Um, uh, she's a sixth grade teacher, and I enjoyed meeting her and learning about her experience um, in Sac City. Uh, that same evening, um, I had the opportunity uh, to um, join Member Minnick um, and uh, had um, a, a sit-down conversation uh, slash uh, pizza dinner uh, with uh, the night shift custodians at Hiram Johnson High School. Uh, uh, some of our uh, custodians, uh, Esther Guzman, Julie Rose, Charles Pantages, Catherine Close, uh, all four of them have served our, districts for, our district for decades. In fact, uh, Julie Rose has worked in our district for over 36 years, and her grandson attends Camellia Basic. Uh, so no accidents in the universe. I'd just been at Camellia, and then I met um, a grandparent uh, that evening. Um, um, just today, um, I had the opportunity to uh, visit Luther Burbank High School uh, as part of uh, the ROTC program's uh, annual review, and I was just impressed by uh, the discipline that our young students uh, displayed uh, and the level of respect for uh, one another uh, in their behavior. And then uh, finished off uh, my school site visits at Pacific Elementary as part of their career day uh, and got to speak to um, Mr. Mario Martin, Martin's uh, fifth grade class um, uh, and uh, was impressed with, uh, with the students. I commended them because as the father of 
fifth grade students myself, I can't get my fifth graders to pay attention to me the way that uh, Mr. Martin's um, uh, students did uh, earlier. Um, uh, we were also uh, joined, and I want to thank um, Mike Beverly, uh, who is SEIU's uh, 1021's vice president. Um, Mike uh, will uh, have completed 30 years of service um, later this year, working for us in Sac City. Obviously, um, I feel very fortunate um, to uh, have the pleasure and honor of meeting these longtime employees. And I think it's important uh, that we thank and recognize them as often as we can for their valuable service. Uh, that said, I also want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that uh, you have until February 28th to nominate an outstanding classified employee for our annual Classified Champions Awards. This is an annual event where classified employees will be recognized for their outstanding accomplishments while performing their duties. We all know of employees who go out of their way to provide outstanding services, and this is your opportunity to nominate uh, one of those employees. So please visit our website uh, and search 2018 Classified Champion Award to, do uh, to download uh, the nomination forms. Uh, I also want to remind parents that open enrollment for kindergarten through eighth grade starts next Tuesday, February 6th, and will run through Tuesday, February 20th. More information on open enrollment is on the homepage of our website. And finally, I want to uh, issue a reminder that our district schools and offices will be closed on Monday, February 12th, and Monday, February 19th for the presidential holidays. Thank you, President Ryan. Thank you, Superintendent Aguilar. Item 12.3, or 12.4, the President's Report. Um, I will be brief. Every morning before I send my six and seven-year-old off to school, I remind them to listen, learn, and be kind. That last point is particularly important because of the astonishing uptick in hate speech and intolerant rhetoric that has even begun to permeate our playgrounds. If you ask my children, they will tell you more important than being smart or beautiful is being kind. While as a district we cannot change the hearts or words of national leaders, we can lead locally by example, and that is why this week the district has launched a Random Acts of Kindness campaign. We know that doing kind things helps grow our children's social and emotional skills. A simple word or a gesture can even help a child who feels isolated or unwelcome stay in school. Each of us is responsible for creating an environment that is safe, welcoming, and inclusive. I encourage our caring teachers, our wonderful custodians and classified staff, our families and children to join in documenting those random acts of kindness that they engage in now through our showcase, which will be held on April 20th. I believe that we can be a counterforce to the ugliness that we've been seeing at a national level by spreading love, one extraordinary act of kindness at a time. I would also like to thank my fellow board members for continuing to lean in and engage as continuous learners in learning sessions that we have been doing throughout the month of January. On January 20th, we engaged in another half-day learning session as a tool for ensuring that we can come in, maximize our effectiveness in board meetings, but also be real partners in understanding how to meet the needs of students and the families across the district at large. And then finally, I brought copies tonight for each of the board members of Education Trust West's new report called the Majority Report, supporting the educational success of Latino students in California. For many of you, you know that my day job is, for more than a decade, focusing on statewide policy change to make pathways into and through college easier for our most vulnerable students. ETW, you may recall, put out a phenomenal report two years ago called Black Minds Matter. This looks at Latino achievement much in the same way Black, Li Black Minds Matters was groundbreaking two years ago in disaggregation of data. I'd like to invite you to an event that ETW will be doing on February 7th at the Sheraton Grand from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., which will be presented by Eloy Ortiz Oakley, our, our wonderful chancellor of the California Community College System, as well as the executive director of Ed Trust West, Ryan Smith. And I think that this is very apropos to the direction we're moving in right now as a district as we try to ensure that we're maximizing opportunity for all students across Sac City Unified School District. 
With that, I will turn it over to item 12.5, our student board member report. Um, as many of you know, second semester has started, so many students are energized and excited for the new year. Um, in addition, the Student Advisory Council, we're moving forward on our next initiative. Um, we're working on getting out a survey in order to gather data to different school sites that we're going to be targeting. Thank you so much, Student Board Member Nguyen. Uh, item 12.6, information sharing by board members. We have a board member Minnick. Thank you, President Ryan. I have a couple things. One, um, I had uh, two really cool experiences this week uh, with the Sacramento Tree Foundation, and I was really happy to have them out. Um, early Saturday morning, there was, I don't know, between 150 and 200 people out at Elder Creek Elementary School uh, planting trees uh, to create more shade opportunities. Well, once the trees kind of fill in. Um, but it was awesome. It was so many students and teachers and families and, and community members came out to uh, dig holes and plant trees. It was really cool. And then on Tuesday, there was another one at uh, Peter Burnett Elementary School. Uh, and we had some folks from SMUD, and we had a, a ton of students that were uh, doing the planning for, I think they had uh, eight to 10 uh, more trees. They had done a tree planting earlier in the year, too. So they did some more tree planting there. To, they have a big open grass space that really needed some shade. So they um, created uh, some pretty cool uh, spaces there, thanks to the Tree Foundation and uh, the staff out of those schools. The other thing I just wanted to mention is uh, West Campus High School has this awesome play. Well, you could have gone to the play instead of listening to us tonight, but it's also playing tomorrow night, um, which is the Crimson House Murder, which is probably pretty scary. Um, it is uh, tomorrow night, Friday, at 6 o'clock on the West Campus stage. Uh, remember, Nguyen, are you going to be there? <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll see you there. Um, so uh, come join me. And it's free. Doors open at, at 5.30. And it should be pretty cool. They have a great partnership with Sacramento Theater Company. So they have folks coming out uh, working <coughs> with the students out there, uh, building up their acting uh, skills and their acting resumes. So I am excited to see it tomorrow night. Thank you so much, Board Member Minnick. Do we have any other board member updates? Board Member Wu. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to say that Last Friday and this Saturday, I sit as the um, member of the Board of Directors of the California School Board Association, and we met as a Board of Directors uh, for the weekend, and I'm happy to send my notes from that board meeting if my colleagues would like them. Thank you, Board Member Wu, and thank you for your service to CSBA. Any other board member updates? Okay, hearing none, we're going to move to our board member committee reports, beginning with the Board Facilities Committee. Thank you. I know we just had these reports, so if you want to waive them, we support that fully. Board uh, Budget Committee. Just a very brief announcement that we will have our next uh, Budget Committee meeting on February 15th, uh, immediately before closed session at 3.30 in the usual room, assuming it's uh, open. Thank we'll you, send Board Members. out, thanks. Thank you, Board Member Hansen. Governance and Policy Committee. Um, our next uh, policy Governance Committee will be next Friday, uh, February 9th at 1130 here at CERNAM. Thank you. Board Member Vang. And finally, our Board Evaluation Committee. Thank you, Board Member Cochran. Item 13.0, Business and Financial Information and Reports. Receive those reports. Item 14.0, Future Board Member Meeting Dates and Locations, February 15th at 4.30 p.m. Um, before I uh, ask the student board member to motion to adjourn, I want to point out that we are finishing tonight's meeting at 8.15. Our goal, I think, for the year should be to have this be a regular occurrence. If we can finish meetings before 9 o'clock, we get families, students, community members home on school nights, and we encourage greater participation and thus are more transparent in the work that we're doing. So with that, I will entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs>